Hello, I'm Laurie Zuck, Public Relations Director for the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League, a nonprofit volunteer organization that rescues Great Danes and places them into permanent loving homes. We'll be discussing the aspects of Great Dane Rescue in just a moment, but first let's meet my guests, Mary Francini, New Jersey Chapter Coordinator and her dog Remington, and Sue Broderick, webmaster and volunteer for New Jersey, and Trisha DiMatteo, who is a foster home volunteer, and her dog Tino. Um, we're going to open up with some general questions first. Let's talk about how do you choose a dog for your lifestyle? Mary? Well, <clears throat> there's um, different things to consider when choosing a dog. First of all, is someone home during the day? Um, is the dog going to be left for long periods of time? Are you an active person? Do you like to go out for long walks with your dog? Do you do things, do you want to do things like agility training, different things that you'd like to do with your dog that you would need a more active dog. Now, coming back to Great Danes, Great Danes are not typically high energy, high activity dogs, even though they will have periods of high energy, high activity. Okay. Um, let's talk about why should you adopt a dog rather than purchase a dog? Well, <clears throat> there are so many dogs that have been unfortunately discarded, given up for various reasons that need loving homes. And so many people are attracted to the new puppy. Not to say that purchasing a puppy is necessarily a bad thing, but if you can open up your home to a dog that, that's been given up and needs a home, it's, it's just a wonderful thing to do. So in essence, you'd be saving the life of a dog. But very often that's the case, yes. And okay. one other thing I'd like to add is that quite often you'll get a dog that's already completely trained. It definitely has its <laughs> benefits. Yeah. You don't have to go through those puppy stages of the chewing and housebreaking. And um, so it it's, uh, can instantly fit into your home. That's a good example. Um, why are dogs dumped into rescues and, and shelters or on the street? Why are there so many dogs that come into these systems? For rescue. There's so many different reasons why people give up uh, their dogs, especially a large breed. The dog got too big. They didn't do the training necessary to control a large dog and now they can't handle the dog so they want to give it up. There's other reasons. They're losing their home, they're moving to an apartment and they don't want to take a large dog into an apartment situation. They're getting divorced. They left the dog outside and now he's barking too much and people are complaining. Great Danes typically are house dogs. They do not do well outside. They don't do well in extremes of temperature. They need to be in the home. They're also very people-oriented and want to be with their people. So um, talk to me then about the differences between rescues and shelters. What are, the, what are the differences between rescues and shelters? Well, shelters definitely have their role. Shelters are kennel situations. Um, where the dog um, is kenneled and, and people may come in and look at the dogs to decide to uh, adopt a dog that's in a kennel that's been given up in a shelter. <clears throat> a rescue usually is a network of people or volunteers uh, such as Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League where the dogs are taken into foster homes. We evaluate the dogs. They live in a home environment. We know all the dog's issues. Um, that we can pass on to a potential adopter, this is what this dog is like in the home. Whereas when you adopt from a shelter, you may not have that information. Okay. Um, how do you find that movies and TV shows with specific breed stars affect the public? Well, <clears throat> does somebody else want to answer that question? Well, we just find that um, when movies come out, like 101 Dalmatians or Scooby-Doo, that people realize that um, they suddenly discover this breed of dog and um, a lot of people decide that they want it. Their children are enthralled by the dog that they see in the movie and of course movies have the dogs doing wondrous things that dogs at home don't necessarily do. So parents give in to the wishes of their children, they go out and purchase a puppy and um, quite often they don't realize that that dog might not fit into their lifestyle. Well, I know that happened with 101 Dalmatians where people went out and bought thousands of um, 
Dalmatians, and many of them were eventually euthanized because they were not known to be good with kids, even though in the movie they were projected. How do you find that the Scooby-Doo movie um, affected Great Dane Rescue? Was there a problem when the movie came out, even though the movie probably fairly well portrayed accurately how uh, a Great Dane's behavior can be? But what do you think about that? Well, again, the, the Great Dane um, was shown to be doing wonderful things, and um, there, it takes a lot of training to, um, to get dogs to do as much as they did in the movie. And Scooby-Doo in the movie almost has human traits. Right, <laughs> which Great Danes tend to do. And, um, and well, talk to me a bit about the, the we were, you were mentioning like how Scooby-Doo tends to take on human qualities. Um, a real life Great Dane living in a home, how does a Great Dane interact with families and kids pretty um, much? And, and should the dog be respected because it's larger, you know, a larger dog? Well, the dogs do have to be trained when they're little. Um, they do get very large. Um, it, a Great Dane can easily put his head up on your kitchen countertop and take whatever is there. <laughs> so people have to be aware of those things. And of course, that's not portrayed in the movie at all. So um, people realize that after the fact and sometimes uh, gr find that a Great Dane just really doesn't fit into their lifestyle. How do Great Danes do with children, though? I mean, because of the size, and I'm assuming if they are trained, they probably can behave well with children. Um, but I would think they would need to, to um, respect the dog and learn how to you know, take care of the dog, not to um, get too rough with the dog. Well, all dogs do need to be trained to behave well with children, and that's not always done. And especially with a large breed dog, actually a giant breed dog like the Great Dane, um, if the child is um, tormenting the dog to the point where the dog feels that it needs to defend itself, it could cause a lot of damage. Typically, Great Danes are wonderful with children if, they're, um, taught, if the children are taught to respect the dog. So it shouldn't be a problem. But um, they can get active and they can physically knock over the children. Now, Trisha has children in Great Danes, and her children <coughs> do very well with her Danes. And she's a foster home and brings in unknown Danes into her home with children. How do you handle that, Trisha? Well, we we first we're very cautious when we first bring the dog in because we don't know 100 percent. But we um, we introduce everybody slowly, and I you know my kids are pretty dang savvy because we have two of our own, and um, we just we're just very careful. But we everyone we've had so far was great with kids. I bring them to soccer events, my fosters, so they they're around kids more than my house. My house is always loaded with children, so they're always around children and. We haven't had a problem. Thank you all for answering my questions, and in a moment we'll be back to speak directly about Great Dane adoption. We're back with volunteers from the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League to talk about Great Dane adoption. Let's start out with how many, how many Great Danes are in rescue at any given time, Mary? Well, usually we have anywhere from 75 to 90 dogs that are available for adoption throughout the states that we cover, the Mid-Atlantic states, from lower New York down to uh, North Carolina. And um, you can see these dogs on our, our websites. And, we have one main website for Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League, and then each chapter does have its own website, as Sue maintains our New Jersey website for the New Jersey available dogs. Can, can you tell me what are the requirements to adopt and the process that people have to, you know, need to go through um, if they do want to adopt? Do you just go and say, hey, I want a dog and it's yours, or is there some type of a process? There certainly is a process, and it takes time. So when um, applicants come to us to adopt a Great Dane, the first thing we tell them is please be patient because we do put them through a, a rather um, rigorous screening. Um, we check for a personal references, vet references. Um, we do a home evaluation. We want to make sure that we're placing the Dane in a home where they're going to stay. 
Danes are not for, every, not for everyone. They are a large breed. They have um, problems specific to the breed. They have larger vet costs, larger food bills. Um, they need to be in the home. So before you can adopt from Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue, you fill out an application. You'll have a phone interview. Um, we want to make sure that you, we get a good feel, that you know what it's like to have a Dane in your home and you really truly want to have a Dane in your home. Um, we'll, and then we'll do your reference checks and if everything checks out, we come to the home and we do the home evaluation. In the home evaluation, we bring a dog, a Great Dane, and observe you in your home with a Dane in your home. How do you react to a dog that goes into the kitchen and his head is over the counter? <laughs> we make the dog drink water in your home, and you can observe what happens when a Great Dane drinks water. They do slobber. And we want to make sure that this is something you're ready for, you're willing to work with, you're dog, dog friendly, and, and that's the kind of home where we want to place a Great Dane. So we, we are fairly confident that the dog will not be returned to us. So you're also looking for safety factors when someone comes out with a Great Dane to your home right. to make we'll, sure it's we'll safe? We'll look for things, um, that's correct, we'll look for things such as uncarpeted stairs, Wood, wooden stairs can be slippery for a Dane. They can get excited, they can be clumsy. They can slip on something like wood steps and um, we'll recommend that they either put um, treads on the steps or coat them with a non-skid surface or carpet them. Um, things like that. Is the yard fence, that's another requirement to adopt a Dane from us, is a fenced in, a fenced in yard so that dogs um, are safe in the yard. We don't accept electric underground fencing as a fencing um, uh, option. That's not accepted. Okay. Um, talk to me about feeding. How do you, do you guys feed um, a better quality food, a special food because the dog is larger? How, what do you need to know if you're going to adopt a Great Dane as far as food? Well, Great Danes are sub susceptible to a condition called bloat, which is um, a condition where their stomach fills with gas and can torse or twist, and it's life-threatening. And they're still not sure exactly what causes this, but there are ways to help prevent it, and one of them is the food that you feed your Dane, and when you feed, and how you feed. Um, we recommend that Danes are fed more than once a day. Once a day is too large a volume to feed a Dane um, in one feeding. We also recommend premium dog food that is higher quality, higher concentrated food, so that, again, they're not eating the volume of food. We also recommend not to exercise your dog about a half an hour before feeding or two hours after feeding when their stomach is full. They should also be fed off an elevated food platform so that they're not um, stretching down to the floor to eat their food. Um, those are the recommendations for feeding a Great Dane. Okay, and what about veterinary care for a Great Dane? Is it more expensive because the dog is a larger size? Definitely. Larger dog, larger food bills, larger vet bills. What would you estimate the annual expense of owning a Great Dane would be? Well, if hopefully your dog is healthy and you don't have any outside health issues. Um, so your vet bills can cost anywhere from four or $500 a year to $1,200 a year, depending on if you have any problems that come up. They do have sensitive stomachs. They can develop gastrointestinal problems that you may need to make a visit to the vet for. Um, they are prone to injury. They're big dogs. They, they bump, they bruise, they swell. <laughs> Things happen. Their tails get injured. My, my Great Dane has had a tail injury and needed his tail docked. That was quite a large bet bill for an injury that we tried to heal and had a problem with. Um, so things do come up and um, vet bills can get expensive. And so can you tell me about um, the exercise requirements for a Great Dane? Well, a Great Dane um, is a low energy dog. And so um, it actually does well in an apartment as long as you take him out for one good walk a day. For the most part, all a Dane requires is a nice couch to lay in. <laughs> uh, around the holiday time, do you, does your group notice an increase in adoptions? Uh, what happens around the holidays? Do a lot of people try to go out and either um, rescue a dog? Do they try to purchase a dog? What happens? Well, our um, group has a policy that we do not adopt during holiday season. 
Um, first off, we don't want people to make a mistake of buying a dog as a gift because um, the recipient might not always want a dog, especially one quite this big. Um, the other reason is that um, during the holidays, there's a lot of stress in the house. People getting ready, you know, buying gifts, setting up um, holiday decorations and such. Um, it's kind of a stressful time for the family and a dog comes into that situation, they sense that stress and also you can't quite give the dog the extra attention that it needs. So you're better off waiting until after the holidays. Okay, and, and Trisha, talk to me about um, grooming. Do they require anything special? Is it pretty basic? It's pretty basic, just a good brushing. It's pretty much clipping of the nails, clipping of their nails, cleaning of the um, ears, etc. Cleaning that, their ears, that kind of stuff. Brushing their teeth here and there. No, it's been difficult. <laughs> Framing too. It's pretty easy. And uh, how do you feel pretty about basic. crate training? Do you all crate train your dogs? I do. I have a female who's crate trained, and fosters that come in, I crate train as well to make it easier for the adopters. Okay. When I got my first Great Dane as a puppy many years ago, mm -hmm. I knew nothing about crates and the. The dog actually chewed up two couches, um, a couple throw <laughs> rugs, um, uh, quite a few things, even the TV remote control before um, we got a crate and that really made a huge difference. It, you know, we never would have gotten rid of the dog, but um, it was definitely an upsetting time for us all. <laughs> so the crate was a great idea. I only used it for a while. Um, the dog decided after he got a little bit older that he didn't like the crate so much, so we let him choose not to go in it. Um, I know that that doesn't work for everyone, but once he got through that chewing period, he was wonderful. He never bothered anything again. Excellent. So it sounds like crate training is definitely the right oh, way to go. Oh, it's wonderful. Excellent. We, we well, definitely recommend crate training for adopt adopters. Well, thank you for answering my questions, and in a moment we're going to be discussing um, fostering of Great Danes and also volunteering for the organization. Thank you all for answering my questions and in a moment we'll be back to discuss fostering and volunteering for the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League. back with volunteers from the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League to find out how you can foster or volunteer for this organization. Mary, can you tell me what are the requirements if somebody out there is interested in fostering a Great Dane? What do they have to do? Well, anyone who's interested in volunteering for uh, Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League usually contacts me and I put them in touch with our volunteer coordinator um, who will do an initial phone screening. If they're interested in fostering, and those are the most valuable volunteers that we have, um, they have to go through the same screening process as someone who is going to adopt. Um, foster homes need to have the ability and the willingness to evaluate a dog that may come in with issues um, that we're not aware of. A lot of times these dogs come from situations where we don't know what the background of the dog is of what they've been exposed to if they've been in an abusive situation and this all needs to be evaluated in the foster home. The foster home needs to be able to separate from their own dogs if necessary, be very careful in introducing to children uh, the unknown and evaluate so we can gather information that is available to the um, appropriate adoptive home. Okay, well Trisha, since you are a foster home, uh, what what process do you go through when a dog comes in and you're fostering it? What do you try to do to get that dog acclimated, you know, to getting ready for its forever home? First, I try to socialize the dog with other dogs. I have two of my own, so we work with that. I um, crate train to make it easier for the adopters, and it, the dog feels safer in a crate in the beginning anyway. Okay. So I um, bring them to parks so they're around children, they're around noise, around you know, the hustle bustle of things. Right. I um, bring them to the vet, just like I would my own dogs. I feed them. I, I take care of them. I love them. I treat them just like they're mine. Right. And it must be difficult to separate with that dog 
once it's once you know it's being adopted I'm a is cry that baby. Yes, I cry <laughs> when they leave I do it's very hard but they I make sure they go to a good home and excellent. that's all that matters excellent yeah. and the foster home does have the, the uh, say if the adopter that comes to meet the dog is the right match for the dog if the foster home does not believe that that adopter is the right match for that dog they have the um, authority to say no this is not the dog for you and you should continue your search to find the right companion so basically what you have is a very selective process from the beginning to the end to make sure that it's a good match because I'm sure that if it wasn't a good match then it would probably be a traumatic experience for both the adopter and for the it's, dog exactly mm -hmm. and we try to prevent that when we place a Dane in an adoptive home we want it to be a permanent home a forever home for the dog that's excellent I'm sure that's very important um, Sue, can you talk to me a little bit about volunteering and what you can do if you want to help? And do you have to have a Dane or not have a Dane? Well, actually, you don't have to have a Dane. I don't have one myself because I'm allergic to dogs, <laughs> even though I love them. And as I tell everybody, I get my fix on the weekends. But um, there are so many ways that we can, um, we can use volunteers. We need people to make phone calls to us, do the vet checks, do reference checks. We need people to come out to meet and greets. Uh, now, meet and greet is an event where um, we'll set up a table with information and merchandise, uh, typically at a pet store or another um, public location where people can come and we can educate them about Great Danes and make them aware of our existence and of the dog's plight. Um, there are other opportunities for volunteering. I, I do the website. Um, I know that there are plenty of other things that I probably just can't think of right now, but, but we do need foster homes. <laughs> Always need foster homes. And, and Mary, maybe you can talk to me a bit about um, sponsoring or donating programs that I'm aware that I understand that you have. If you want to sponsor a dog, how do you do yes, that? Yes, if you don't have the time um, to volunteer or um, to, you know, to do anything physically for the rescue organization, we can always take uh, donations. Um, you can still be a member and get all the information, um, the newsletter that goes out uh, a few times a year, um, just by paying a membership. And there are plenty of opportunities to donate to maybe sponsor a particular foster dog that has extra medical bills that we may need help with. Um, so there's plenty of ways to help out in, in as small a way as, as you'd like or as large a way as you like. Can people, if they wanted to donate to your organization, donate things like food or things that Great Danes could use, toys? Absolutely. Things like um, that? Unfortunately, we don't always have enough foster homes, and we do have some dogs that need to be into in kennels. And um, it's always helpful to have donations of either dog food, toys, chew bones, um, beds, bedding. Those things are very much appreciated when they're donated. And I'm sure all those things must be in the extra large size. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Great. Well, what is it? Can you each tell me, um, I'll start with Mary first, what, can you, what do you love about Great Danes? What's the best thing about having Remington? Well, um, there's a lot of wonderful breeds out there. I am particularly um, fond of the Great Dane personality and their people, they are so people oriented. Um, they. They just bond to their people, the personality, they're just, my dog, you, you can see if you see him with our family, he's just a big bushmelon, just wants to be with you. He's funny, he's goofy, and they're just so enjoyable to have in your home. Thank you. And Sue, I know that you don't have a Great Dane. I know you have a beautiful cat, Pepper, but I know that you have had Danes in the past, and obviously you help out quite a bit with this organization. What is it that you love the most about Great Danes that the viewing audience should know about? Um, I think that they're just wonderful dogs. They have a great personality. They're very sweet and lovable. Um, I love it that they're big. I love big dogs. I used to have horses and I don't have them anymore <laughs> and this was the next best thing. <laughs> and you can keep them in the house too. That's you know, right. They must get a them. lot of attention everywhere they go, I'm, yes, I'm they sure. Do. Yeah, and I'm not sure what it is. They just grow on you. And one other thing about Great Danes is a lot of people find that they can't have just one. They're like potato <laughs> chips. <laughs> and Trish, I'll ask you the same question. What is it that you love so much about Tino and, and your Great Danes? Their size, again. I love big dogs. Their loyalty, their temperament. They're just, they're just wonderful. They're mellow. And they're very good with children. Great. Well, thank you all for being with me today to answer these questions. Um, hopefully... 
you know, we've helped answer some of the questions on the adoption and fostering process and volunteering. If you're interested in uh, helping out the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue League, you can go to magdrl-nj.com or you can call 973-334-1628. Thank you. Thank you.